Welcome to the Air Gun Show. We're going big on ball pups this week. We've got the Air Arms Galahad on test, and before that, I'm out hunting squirrels with the Daystate Renegade. Right, I might have to grey squirrels this morning and they've caused a heck of a lot of damage in these woods, particularly in the newer plantations where the trees are about 10 to 20 years old. Now their bark stripping has completely killed a lot of trees, but in most of the others it's just deformed them so much that the timber value is greatly reduced. So the landowner is very keen to have their numbers kept down. On top of that, these woods also host a pheasant shoot and the squirrels are absolutely hammering their way through the grain that's put out to hold those pheasants. So that's costing the gamekeeper, not only in terms of the grain, but also in terms of his time keeping those feeders topped up. Now, as well as that, these squirrels are notorious nest thieves. So in the spring, when those pheasants are nesting, they're gonna be taking their eggs and young. Now, I've been running some peanut feeders here, so hopefully we'll know exactly where those squirrels are going to be. I've already shot this one a couple of times, and it's produced some pretty good bags, but I'm sure there are still plenty here to be had, so let's get cracking with it. Right, you'll see I'm using a hide today, but it's not a particularly discreet one, and I haven't gone to the trouble of dressing it in with vegetation to help it to blend in with its surroundings. Now, that's because I've been running this feeder for about a fortnight, so firstly, the squirrels have just become accustomed to the screen, and they'll accept it as just another part of the environment here. Secondly, those squirrels will have got such a taste for the peanuts that they'll be very, very bold. Now, it's not unusual that they may actually clock us through the netting, but they're so hooked on those peanuts, my expectation is that they will just continue to munch away and in all likeliness offer us shots with the air rifle. Well, we've not seen any squirrels yet but there are quite a few songbirds coming into the feeder. Now, that's quite a good sign, not only because it's just a bit of interest watching them while we're waiting here, but also because that activity should attract the attention of any squirrels in the vicinity and draw them in for a closer look. 
Now, if we manage to thin these squirrels out a bit more, it also gives those songbirds a better chance of successfully fledging their young once the spring rolls around. Wow, that was quite a spectacle. I had a squirrel on the feeder and a jay came in. The squirrel went bundling in, like it tried to attack the jay, but it missed it. The squirrel then went back onto the feeder, grabbed a peanut, was just about to tuck into that, and another squirrel came in and chased that one off. Now, one of the squirrels eventually did end up on top of the feeder, gave me the shot I've been waiting for. So that's the first one in the bag. Now for a moment there, it looked like it was going to end up dead on top of the feeder, but it did eventually twitch off and it's fallen onto the ground. So that's got us off the mark anyway. Well, we had another fidgety one there, but uh, it came straight back. Another one in the bag. Now, I'm not sure why it left the feeder actually, but that is a great thing about feeding peanuts. You've got that draw. The squirrels can't usually resist it. They come back again. The other great thing with it is that you get those measured shots. Now, I'm shooting, well, I'm probably about 20 meters from the, from the feeder today. There really is no excuse for missing when you've got a static target at that range. You often see some interesting sights when you're covering a squirrel feeder. Now that woodpecker actually dropped in a few times the last time I was here, so um, it's obviously well on to those peanuts. Well, not sure whether that squirrel spotted the gun going through the net or whether it saw a glint from one of our camera lenses, but it definitely knew we were here. Nonetheless, it held still, gave me the shot. Incidentally, I'm using the Daystate Renegade today, which is a really nice compact little gun. It's handling brilliantly in the confines of this hide. One thing I have noticed is that it's got a shrouded barrel. There is still a little bit of a bark from its muzzle now, with the squirrels coming to the feeder like this today, 
it's really not a problem. But if I was using this regularly and in more testing hunting situations, I'd probably be inclined to fit it with a silencer. And that takes us up to four. Now we're being very, very lucky today in that the squirrels tend to be settling on the top of the feeder, which makes it so much easier to get clear shots at them than when they're scratching around in the feed tray. Well, I'm going to make that the last one because Nikki needs to get away. But I'm pleased with how it's gone. We've bagged five squirrels in a relatively short session. That's good news for the forestry works here, good news for the pheasant shoot, and also very good news for those wild songbirds. Now, although Nikki needs to get away, I'm going to try and stick it out for a bit longer, see if I can bag a few more. That said, it's been threatening to rain on and off all morning, so I hope I'm not making a mistake and end up getting an absolute soaking. I'm pleased to say that I didn't get drenched at the end of that session and I managed to bag a couple more bushy tails. Now it's the air gun show news. This is the air gun show news brought to you by Valley Arms Shooting Supplies. Shooting is good for you, it's official. A new report on the personal value of shooting finds that shooting enhances your physical and social well-being. It helps get more adults active, reduces social isolation and encourages people to engage with the natural environment. 91% of respondents to the report said that without shooting, they would spend less time outdoors. Head to the Basque website to see the full report. Don't forget, you've only got a month to get your air guns licensed if you live in Scotland. If you don't, you could face prison and a fine. It becomes an offence to own an unlicensed air gun in Scotland from the end of the year. But police backlogs mean that even if you've applied for a licence, you might not receive it in time. In that case, you'll have to store it with your local dealer or give it to someone with a licence. If you have a shotgun or firearm certificate, you can keep your air guns until your current certificate expires. There could be two new air rifle team events at the next Olympics. The ISSF has recommended establishing mixed gender team shoots in 10 meter air rifle and air pistol in Tokyo 2020 in an effort to ensure gender equality across the shooting events. Double trap and prone rifle are set to miss out to make room. Check out all the details on the ISSF website. And finally, emotional Christmas adverts are everywhere these days. But now, the air gun industry has one of its own. Air Arms' latest advert tells the story of a boy who loves all things air gun shooting and has his dreams fulfilled with an S200 Sporter rifle on Christmas Day. Head to the address on screen to find out more. That was the Air Gun Show News. I've been wanting to get my hands on this air gun for quite a while. It's the super compact Air Arms Galahad. This is the British gunmaker's first bullpup and going by first impressions, I'd say they've done a very good job of it. There are a lot of bullpups around at present and this is certainly one of the better looking ones out there. The Galahad is available in numerous variants, including carbine and rifle lengths 
and regulated and unregulated versions. This is the unregulated carbine version. It tips the scales at just over three and a half kilos unscoped and measures a very stubby 70 centimeters from end to end. The rifle version is, of course, somewhat larger, but still measures a pretty compact 80 centimeters. Starting with the stock, this is the walnut version and it looks great. Beach and synthetic options are also available. The fore end is plenty long enough and the sculpted drop down pistol grip cradles your trigger hand very comfortably. The checkering is crisp and stylish without looking too elaborate, though I do think the panels on the fore end would benefit from being just a little bit longer. Cheek support is often overlooked in ballpup design and it's not unusual to find yourself nestling your cheek into a sharp metal edge. That's not the case with the Galahad, which features a very comfortable curved cheek support that has a soft touch rubberized finish. The fore end of the stock features a discreet accessory rail for attaching a bipod or sling swivel. The stock is ambidextrous but I found it to be a very good fit and it should be comfortable for shooters of most sizes. The multi-adjustable butt pad also means that you can further refine gun fit and it's not just adjustable up and down you can also offset it to the left or right to introduce some cast to the stock which is a really nice touch. The Galahad has a neat flash free black finish that should look at home in the field and on the range. The shrouded barrel looks good and also provides a reasonable degree of sound suppression. It's threaded to accept a silencer and most hunters will probably want to do that, even if it does somewhat compromise the gun's compact proportions. The scope rail is nice and long and is available in Picatinny and dovetail options. I particularly like the fact that it's lower to the barrel than you'll find on some ball pups, so you can mount the scope relatively low to the bore. Nonetheless, air arms have still fitted a level to the rear of the rail to help ensure that you don't lose scope alignment by canting the gun. One of the Galahad's real standout features is its side cocking lever. Push it down and forwards with your thumb and then push it back up to index the magazine, cock the gun and load another pellet without having to move your hand very far at all. It's fast and slick and enables you to stay on aim while you reload. It's also ambidextrous and can be swapped to the opposite side of the gun. That side lever drives the tried and tested Air Arms 10 shot magazine as found on the S410 and S510 air rifles. It's easy to reload and incredibly smooth and reliable in operation. It also features a clear back plate so you can tell at a glance just how many pellets you've got left in the clip. Bull pups are often let down by their triggers but the two stage unit on the Galahad is very good. I've not tweaked this one at all and the first stage comes to a clear stop before the trigger breaks with a crisp and predictable let off. The blade does look quite simple but I don't doubt that a lot of thought has gone into it. It certainly feels very comfortable against the pad of the finger. There's a button safety catch within the trigger blade. It's not a setup that I particularly like because I prefer the safety to be away from the trigger. But it works. You push it in from the left to make the gun safe and then push it back from the right when you're ready to take the shot. You fill up with air using the supplied quick fill probe. The collar at the front of the cylinder keeps dirt away from the internals and simply pushes forwards to reveal the inlet. The pressure gauge is also at the front of the cylinder and provides a clear indication of remaining air reserves. This is the unregulated carbine version in 177 and it turns out more than 70 very consistent shots at just a whisker over 11 foot pounds from a 190 bar fill. Go for the regulated rifle model in 2.2 and you'll get twice as many. FAC versions are also available in calibres up to 0.25. Let's see how it shapes up on the range. Well, 
I really can't fault that. There's virtually no wind at all today and at 30 metres the Galahad has turned out a five shot group that must fall comfortably within 10 millimetres from centre to centre. Now that was shooting rested but being such a compact air gun it's also great fun to shoot freehand. The Air Arms Galahad is a bullpup that ticks all the right boxes. It looks the business and it shoots extremely well. With prices starting at £1,059, it isn't cheap. But it's a fantastic air gun developed and built by a leading British gun maker. If you're in the market for a top quality bullpup, you certainly need to get your hands on the Galahad. That's all for this week, but we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thanks for watching and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits you could be taking advantage of through our gun membership.